So in this video, I'm going to show you a process that we follow called equating indices. There are other ways to solve them as well, but we're going to have a look at how we solve them through equating indices. So starting with this problem here, to equate indices, what we actually need is we need both sides of our equation here to have the same base. So in this case, we've got a base of 2 and we've got the number 32. If I can rewrite 32 as an exponent with a base of 2, then I can now equate the two indices. So for example, so this is still 2 to the power of x. 32 is the equivalent of 2 to the power of 5. Now, because I've got two bases that are the same, what it means is the two exponents now have to be the same for this to be true. So what I can therefore say here is my x must be equal to 5. These two exponents must be equal to each other when the two bases are the same. So if we apply that logic over here as well, we can also do it when our number over here is a fraction, because remember, they're just negative indices. So if I'm looking at this, I'm going to rewrite this with the base of 5. So it'll be 5, the x plus 2 is equal to, now 25 is 5 squared. Now because it's on the bottom of the fraction, I'm going to make it a negative indice. So this is 5 to the negative 2. Now because I've rewritten this with both the same base, the base of 5, I now know that the exponents must be equal to each other. So therefore, my x plus 2 must also equal negative 2. And once I've got this, I can now follow my normal solving equation rules that I've done before to find the value of x. So if I subtract 2 from both sides, I find that my x here, for this to be true, is equal to negative 4. Now, you don't always get situations where the base has been given to us already. Sometimes we actually have to follow that process of rewriting it with the same base on both sides of the equation, such as here. So I can't really write 27, at least nicely, with a base of 9 easily. But looking at both sides of the equation, I know that 9 has a base of 3 quite nicely, and 27 has a base of 3 quite nicely as well. So if I now look at rewriting this, this will be uh, 3 squared, but of course that still has to multiply my x up here. And over on this side, 27 is 3 cubed. So I can now rewrite this to say, well, this is going to be 3 times 2x, because multiplying the two indices is equal to 3 to the power of 3. So that means that my 2x must equal 3, because the bases are now the same, the exponents must equal with each other. So if my 2x is equal to 3, dividing both sides by 2, therefore my x must be equal to 3 over 2 for this to be true. Now, when you follow this process, it's very important that we do be very careful with our order of operations and making sure we don't make mistakes. So let's have a look at this example here. This example here, I can write, rewrite both sides with a base of 2. So if I'm looking at doing that, this left-hand side becomes 2 to the power of 3, but that's got to multiply. You can see here that it just needs to multiply with these here. So that'll be multiplying x minus 2. And on the right here, this is the same as saying it's 2 to the power of negative 1. So what I can now state here is because I've got both sides with a power of 2, this 3 bracket x minus 2 must be equal to negative 1. And I can now use my inverse operations to find the value of x. So if I'm doing that, I'm just going to multiply the 3 out. So that'll be 3x minus 6 is equal to negative 1. Uh, add 6 to both sides, so 3x will be, add 6 here will be 5, and then divide by 3 will leave my x to equal 5 over 3. So as you can see here, when we're solving equations where the exponent part of the equation is now a variable, we can use a process of equating indices to be able to find that value of the variable. Now, what's important here, before we equate indices, we need to represent both sides of the equation with the same base. Once we've done that, we can state that the two indices have to be equal with each other for that to be true. 